Hi guys and welcome to the Warhammer Lady. So it's time for the continuation of HQs for the Eldar Codex. Today we're going to go through the Warlord traits and just keep on going with HQs and see how many we can fit into one video. So let's get started. Of course the Eldar also have their very own Warlord traits. Looks like this. The first one is called Ambush of Blades. This is a one use only, and you have to declare that your warlord is using it at the beginning of your shooting or your assault phase. And if you do, your warlord and any friendly unit from Codex Eldar within 12 inches can reroll failed to wound rolls on once for the remainder of that phase. The next one is called Fate's Messenger, and it gives your warlord the ability to reroll failed saving throws of once throughout the game. Mark of Incomparable Hunter. The Warlord has to split fire a special rule. Eye on distant events. This is also a one use only, and you declare that you're using it in the beginning of your enemy's shooting phase. And for the remainder of that phase, your Warlord and any friendly unit from this codex within 12 inches have the stealth special rule. Falcon Swiftness allows for your Warlord and his unit to add plus one to the die roll when rolling to run. And the last one is called Seer of Shifting Vector. And this allows friendly unit from the Codex LR to arrive via deep strike six inches away from the Warlord without scattering. Those were the Warlord traits, and now we're moving on to HQs. Eldral Duthron, compared to a Space Marine Chapter Master, he's about 80 points more expensive and not as good in close combat because he's a sidekick. So he's one less in weapon skill and one less in strength, but otherwise they're the same. Eldrad, he's an infantry character, he's actually an independent character as well. He has a shuriken pistol, and I remember shuriken weapons had a funny special rule called Bladestorm. Witchblade, which is the same as the forestry you had yesterday. Uh, Ghost Helm, which allows for you to neglect perils of the warp by spending one warp charge. Runes of Warding and Runes of Witnessing, we went through those yesterday as well. He has a Warlord trade and Iron Distant Events. And the special rules, Ancient Doom and Battle Focus, these were the Eldar special rules, remember? Fleet, independent character, Psyker of Master level 4. And he generates his powers from divination, telepathy, and rules of fate. So he's a really strong Psyker. He also has a special rule called the Path Beyond. And what this does is, after both sides have deployed, but before scouts are deployed, you can redeploy D3 plus one of your units. But they have to be deployed on your side of the battle board. So you, even if your units have infiltrate, you have to put them on your deployment side. You cannot choose to take units in and out of ongoing reserves either. But this is a really good tactical special rule. He also has some Remnant's Glory, of course, because it's awesome. He has Armor of the Last Rune. It's a 3 plus invulnerable save, giving armor. And Staff of Ulthamar. This is a close combat weapon, strength of users, so not very high. AP3, though. Melee, Spirit Link, Fleshbane, and Force, so even though he has a low strength, he always holds in 2+, plus, which is good. This is no close combat guy, he has one attack, but this could potentially, maybe not, well yeah, give him a fair chance if he is charged. The good thing about this weapon is the Spirit Link ability. And whenever you make a psychic test with this character, you roll a d6, if you pass it. On a 5 or a 6, he gains one warp charge, just like that. So this guy he has four warp charges, and he has the ability to gain even more if you roll good. And he can basically just negate perils of the warp. So, really good psycho. I want to say expensive, but looking at the other LR HQs, then they're all expensive. So, he's LR. <laughs> but yeah, really good psycho. Prince Uriel, he's the Autark of Yaden. He's 15 points more expensive than a Space Marine Chapter Master, but He's a bit better at shooting, so plus one in ballistic skill, and a bit better in combat, so plus one wound and plus one attack, though he's Eldar, so minus one in strength and toughness. He's a infantry character, he has heavy aspect armor, gives him a three plus save, and a force shield, so a four plus invulnerable save as well. And plus my grenades. He has the warlord trade Ambush of Blades, and the special rules Ancient Doom, Battle Force, Fleet, Independent Character. And the path of strategy. Remember, he's an autark. We talked about autarks in the last video. This special rule allows for you to modify your resource roll by plus one or minus one. Good strategic thing. He also has some remnants of glory. The first one is called the Eye of Wrath. This is a one use only and it happens in the fight subphase, a hit initiative step, so seven. 
And he cannot be in a, a challenge if he is to use this. When he does, you place a large blast marker on top of Uriel, and all of the models around him hit by this, except for Uriel, suffers a strength 6 AP3 hit. So this could potentially be really nasty if you have friendly units close by. Uh, also, all unsaved wounds that count towards the combat resolution. He also has Spear of Twilight. It's a melee weapon, strength of user, with Flesh Bane, so it's okay, always wounds on, on 2+, plus, AP3, Armor Bane, and Cursed. Cursed is not so good. It means that he has to re-roll in close combat all of his saving throws of 6s. So it could be potentially nasty, but still he's a good close combat guy. He has 4 attacks, 5 free charges, a good close combat weapon. Or if you want to, you could use the Eye of Wrath. Just if you do, make sure that you charge him with him alone, because it could really hurt your own units. And if you do, remember it's at initiative 7, so your opponent won't be able to pile in before you do it. So you should charge into a unit that's already basically piled up. And also make sure that your opponent does not have a guy that can challenge Uriel because if he's challenged, he can't use it. So, other than that, he's a good, fairly cheap HQ for Elder. Elite Knight Spears of Walker of the Hidden Path. He is a really, really good sniper. Compared to a Space Marine Chapter Master, he's 15 points more expensive, so the same as Prince Uriel. He's awesome at shooting, plus 4 in Melissa skill, still Eldar, so minus 1 in strength and toughness, and a little bit faster, plus 1 in initiative. Otherwise they're the same. He's infantry character, he has mesh armour that gives him a 5 plus save, a shuriken pistol and a power sword. He has the wall of trademark of incomparable hunter, and the special rules ancient doom, battle focus, fleet, hatred necrons, prefer enemy necrons, independent character and shrouded. He also has a special rule called Sharp Shot, which makes all of his shots into precision shots. All of them. Really good. And Walker of the Hidden Path. And this gives him the Infiltrate special rule, and he can be placed anywhere on the board, not in impassable terrain though, regardless of the distance to the enemies. Also, if you have any friendly Eldar Rangers or Alatoic Pathfinders that are outflanking, they can come down next to him via Deep Strike. Although you have to be able to place the entire unit within 6 inches of him, and they will not scatter after that. So they have to be really close to him for this to work. He has Remnants of Glory. It's Voidbringer. This is a really cool long rifle. 48 inch range, strength X because it's a sniper. AP2, heavy 1, distort and sniper. Now distort is a special rule, that on a roll of 6 when to wound, it wounds automatically regardless of toughness, which doesn't really matter because it's sniper anyway. But it also gives you the instant death special rule against a non-vehicle character, well, model, sorry. Against a vehicle, if you roll a 6, then your penetration, your armor penetration roll, if you roll a 6, it will always penetrate, regardless of the armor value. So even though it will be counted as a strength 3 weapon when you shoot for a vehicle, you could potentially penetrate one. And he is ballistic skill 9, so it gets to re-roll failed shooting attacks, so that's good. Also. If you have him in your army, you can upgrade Eldar Rangers to be Alethoic Pathfinders. It's a tad steep point cost, but if you do, they gain the Shrouded Special Rule and the Sharpshot Special Rule. So all of your uh, Alethoic Pathfinders will make precision shots all the time. They don't have the best rifles, it's only AP6, but still, enough shots can always kill off, say, special weapons and so forth. So that's good. So as I said, this guy, he's a... Uh, really good sniper. You could have him kill off, say, characters in a Terminator armor, such as Belial. I mean, it takes away the save, and if you fail to save it, then Belial is dead. Poof! You can also take out monstrous creatures, so he's, he's a really good sniper, and a fairly cheap HQ for Eldar. Asherman, the Hand of Assyrian. He's almost twice the point cost of a Space Marine Chapter Master. He's also a bit better, so he has plus one in weapon skill, plus two in ballistic skill, plus two in initiative, plus one attack, and two plus save. And this is because of his phoenix armor that he has. He also has a twin-linked Avenger shuriken catapult. This is 18 inch range, strength four, AP five, assault three, and blade storm. So you could potentially get rending hits if you're lucky. 
He also has some special roles, Ancient Doom, Battle Focus, Independent Character, Eternal Warrior, Fearless, Fleet, and Counterattack. Then he has his very own special ability, and this is called Hand of Assyrian. If he is in your primary attachment, he has to be your warlord, because he is the warrior amongst warriors. He's a bit special though, in a good way. When you have him as a warlord, you get D3 warlord traits, not just one, which is quite insane. And you can't have duplicates though, so you can't have one use only things more than once, but still. D3 warlord traits, that's really good. Uh, he also has Remnants of Glory. It's a sword called the Sword of Asura. It gives him Strength plus 1, AP 2, Mastercrafted, and Soul Racer. A Soul Racer means that if your model takes an unsafe wound, then you have to pass a leadership test. If you don't, that model is removed as casualty. So basically, it's leadership instant death. Which is pretty cool, and it could be really useful if you've modified the leadership of, say, a really good character with a psychic power or whatever. He also has two Exarch powers. First one is called Battle Fortune. It's a 4 plus invulnerable save. And the other one is called Shield of Grace. This is a 3 plus invulnerable save in a challenge if you choose to defend. And this you do in the initiative 10 step of the battle subface. You choose to have him defend, and then he can only fight with one attack, but he has a 3 plus invulnerable save. But this sword, it makes it okay with just one attack. Seeing as it has Mastercraft, you can reroll one fail to hit, and it's AP2, and it's a death leadership if you're really lucky. So even though he might not kill off anything in that challenge, he can still hold his ground and he won't die because he is Eternal Warrior. So that's good, because he only has toughness for it. It's a low toughness. So yes, this is a really good close combat hero for Eldar. He is a tad expensive, but again, Eldars are usually expensive, so... Good, good character. Yes, I forgot to say bye bye. That was the last entry for this video, and I'll go through the last of the remaining HQs tomorrow. So until then, have a very good day. Bye.